How's it going everyone? My name is Deathboy and today I present the Ivory Tower Gate 4 Guide. In this video, I'll go over some major mechanics and some notable attack patterns. If you have enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. For Gate 4, you want to bring the following battle items. Whirlwind Grenade, Atropine or Time Stop, and Destruction Bomb. Before you start the fight, you need to assign roles for certain mechanics. In most groups, party number 1 and 2 will go 5 o'clock for the last portion of the 165 mechanic, and party number 3 and 4 will go 7 o'clock, but you can swap this around if you like. For the 60 HP line mechanic, the party needs to decide who is going to take the tether and who is going to get grabbed by the boss towards the end of that mechanic. Usually, the lowest stagger member in the party should get grabbed by the boss during the end of the 60 HP line mechanic, and the role of tether is usually assigned based upon who has the lowest damage, but this does not really matter. Unlike the previous gates for Ivory Tower, that only had two mechanics per gate, Gate 4 has more mechanics which I will go over now. The first major mechanic cap is at 160 HP lines or below. The boss will move to the center of the map, and every member needs to go to the X3 position. The boss is going to spawn a cone telegraph wherever you are standing. Afterwards, there will be another cone telegraph that will spawn wherever you are standing. Then finally, one last cone telegraph that will follow you, then eventually lock on to your position. You need to aim this last telegraph at the mirror that is at your position. The mirror itself will also show a yellow telegraph that you should not stand in. If you get hit by any of the telegraphs, you will get an attack power debuff that can stack and you will take considerable damage. If some members are getting hit by the telegraphs often, the support should use awakening to mitigate the damage. Because the first two telegraphs will simply lock onto your position, you can move back and forth. But the final telegraph will follow you, then stop and lock onto your position after a few moments. You need to position yourself accordingly so that you do not get hit and make sure you aim the last telegraph to the mirror so that the mirror can be hit by the attack. After the three telegraphs spawn at your X3 position, Every member needs to move clockwise and repeat the same thing two more times. If done correctly, every mirror should be attacked three times in total and should be dealt with. If any mirror is not attacked three times in total by the final telegraph that spawns, the mirror will eventually destroy that side of the map after the mechanic is complete, which can make the fight more annoying. Once you've dealt with every mirror, you will need to complete a stagger check on the boss, located in the middle. If you fail this stagger check, it will be a wipe. Do not hold back and use your high stagger skills. Save your whirlwind grenade for the next part of this mechanic. Once the stagger check is complete, four mirrors will spawn at 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and 7 o'clock with a stagger bar. The two mirrors at the top will be ignored because the stagger check is too tight to complete all four. Party number 1 and 2 will go 5 o'clock, and 3 or 4 will go 7 o'clock. Throw the whirlwind grenade immediately and dish out some stagger skills to complete the stagger check on the mirror. Failing the stagger check on either mirror will not cause a raid wipe, but it will destroy that side of the map. Once you complete the first major mechanic, you will notice a purple stagger bar below the boss's HP line. Every time you deplete the stagger bar, the boss will be pinned to the ground with the weak point icon. Completing the destruction check on the boss will spawn a red orb coming from the boss that will aggro to the closest member. It is ideal for the support to stand close to the boss to obtain aggro for this red orb so that DPS members can immediately start dishing out some damage. You need to kite the red orb close to one of the platforms that are destroyed. If done correctly, that side of the map will be restored. You can restore broken parts of the map throughout the fight by staggering the boss and completing a destruction check. However, if the boss is close to 60 HP lines and he is staggered, do not use destruction bomb as you will need that for the 60 HP line mechanic. The next major mechanic cap is at 110 HP lines or below. The boss will move to the center of the map and you will see 8 mirrors surrounding the boss. The boss will then stab one of these mirrors. It will either be a real or fake stab. If it's a fake stab, the mirror will glow blue but you will not counter the mirror. However, if it's a real stab, you will counter the mirror when it glows blue. Members will counter mirrors in the order of their party number. The order is 1-1, 2-2, 3-3, and 4-4. This means that party number 1 will be assigned to the first two mirrors that the boss stabs, whether real or fake. Then, party number 2 will be assigned to the next two mirrors, so on and so forth. Every time you counter a mirror, you will get a stackable stacker debuff and your cooldowns will reset. 
after you count through your mirror, it will glow blue periodically after a few moments throughout the entire mechanic. So you need to maneuver to your mirror that is real throughout the mechanic and continue to counter it. If a member were to miss a real counter or counter a fake mirror, a map wide explosion will occur that will reset the stagger buff and deal considerable damage. If members were to fail this multiple times, it may be a raid wipe due to insufficient stagger. A moment after the boss stabs the final mirror, the mirrors will go away and the boss will show a bright red aura around him and try to prepare a final attack. You need to complete the stagger check on the boss, otherwise it is a raid wipe. The next major mechanic happens at 60 HP lines or below. Four mirrors will spawn, each one spawning at the X3 position. You will need to go to your X3 position. Each mirror will show a weak point icon. Throw your destruction bomb at the mirror to complete the destruction check. Each mirror that is destroyed via destruction bomb will provide each member with a stagger buff, stacking up to four times. After throwing your destruction bomb, move to the middle where the boss is located. A stagger bar will be shown on the boss. You need to finish the stagger check on the boss, otherwise it is a raid wipe. If the stagger check fails, it could be due to a member throwing the destruction bomb late. After completing the stagger check, the boss will show a weak point icon in front of him. Use weak point skills to complete the destruction check. If you fail to do this, it will be a raid wipe. Once you pass the destruction check on the boss, a tether will be attached to a member and you will see four mirrors at the X3 position. Whoever is assigned tether needs to walk through the tether so that it is attached to that member. The boss will then spawn a total of three red circle telegraphs beneath every member. Keep moving to avoid knockback. After the second telegraph, the boss will attempt to grab anyone in front of him, noted by a purple cone telegraph. The highest DPS player should get grabbed by the boss first. Once you get grabbed, the boss is going to look at the member who has the tether. The member with the tether needs to line themselves up with the mirror so that the member who is grabbed gets thrown into the mirror. If done correctly, the member will be brought to a separate dimension where the member will fight a mini boss. You will also notice a dial around the edge of the map. The mini boss must be dealt with before the dial runs out. On the outside, the same three telegraph pattern into a grab will occur, up to three times in total. The second member to get grabbed will be the support. Remember, after two red circle telegraphs, the boss will try to grab, so be sure to stand in front to get grabbed. The last player to get grabbed will be the other DPS member. This will result in a tether player on the outside alone dealing with the boss and three members on the inside dealing with the mini boss. If the mini boss is not killed in time, everyone in the room with the mini boss will die and the boss will regain HP. If this happens, you should restart the raid. If no one gets grabbed by the boss or the tether member does not properly guide the first member into the mirror, everyone on the outside would take considerable damage and the boss will regain HP, resulting in the party having to do the mechanic again. Once the mini boss is dealt with, all three members will be brought to the outside and the boss will move to the middle and will attempt to grab any member standing at 7 o'clock. The member with the weakest stagger should get grabbed by the boss by standing close to him at 7 o'clock. Once grabbed, a stagger check will occur that you must complete. Failure to complete the stagger check will result in a wipe. The last major mechanic happens at 35 HP lines or below. The boss will move to the middle of the map and you will simply dish out as much damage as you can. Four mirrors will spawn at the X3 position that have a stagger bar. Most parties will ignore these mirrors and simply use this mechanic as a DPS window. You can decide to stagger one or two mirrors if you like so that part of the map is not broken. After the 35 mechanic is complete, the boss will have enhanced attack patterns. In addition, he will cast a periodic map-wide AoE attack until he is dead. This map-wide AoE attack does considerable damage. Support should focus on shield and damage reduction abilities. I will now go over some notable attacks that I think you should be aware of before you enter this gate. Yellow Cone Attack The boss will stand still and spawn a cone telegraph onto each member that is facing behind you. You need to face the edge of the map or stack with other members while facing the edge of the map. After a moment, the cone that is attached to you will spawn a yellow cone telegraph. If done correctly, there should be no yellow telegraph around you. If there is, you can space bar through it to prevent knockback. Red Laceration The boss will stand still and spawn a large red line telegraph onto two random members. The members that have this line telegraph should stand away from the middle. Pay attention to the second member who got the line telegraph. In a moment, the line telegraph attached to you will drop a pulsing line attack that does considerable damage if you stay inside of it. This will occur one more time. 
afterwards, a red circle telegraph will appear on the ground, and a boss will land onto the second member who received the line telegraph. An inside safe yellow telegraph will be shown wherever the boss lands. Every member should gather up with the second member after the second pulse telegraph has spawned so that no one gets knocked back or takes considerable damage. Small purple orb. Randomly throughout the fight, a large purple aura will be shown in the middle of the map. After a moment, one purple orb will spawn at one of the X3 positions. A member needs to space bar through the purple orb to make it go away. You can also walk through the purple orb, but then you will be imprisoned and members will have to free you by auto-attacking or casting multi-hit skills. If the purple orb is left alone, it will eventually destroy all surrounding parts of the map, which can make the fight more annoying. Large Red Orb The boss will teleport to 9 o'clock or 3 o'clock and take reduced damage. He will then spawn a large red orb that needs to be dealt with before it reaches the other side. If the orb reaches the other side, all platforms will be destroyed, making the fight more annoying. In addition, you cannot attack the left or right side of the orb. If you do, the damage will reflect back to you and most likely kill you. Only attack the front or back side. Repeating Charge Attack The boss will teleport to the middle and spawn a red circle telegraphs beneath every member. Be sure to spread out and do not move to the outside. The boss will repeatedly charge, noted by a red line telegraph. He will repeat this three times in total. If a member gets grabbed, they will take continuous damage until the third charge is complete. After the boss charges three times in total, four clones of the boss will spawn at the X3 position. Only one of them is the real boss. If a member got grabbed by the boss, you can look at the minimap to see where the member is located to find out where the real boss is located. Or look for a clone with an HP bar above its head. The boss will glow blue and he must counter the clone. Golden Circle The boss will jump in the air and have a golden circle beneath his feet. At least one member needs to stand inside the golden circle. Once the golden circle goes away, the next attack will be outside safe, then inside safe. Pizza Counter The boss will target a random member and show two large cone telegraphs, one in front and one behind. In a moment, the boss will glow blue. Then a member must counter the boss. If you fail the counter, the boss will destroy all sides of the map that are in range of the cone telegraph. And that will conclude my guide for Ivory Tower Gate 4. This will conclude the raid guide series for Lost Ark until further raids are released. I know Theamine is coming out soon, but do not expect a guide from Theamine from me for quite some time as I have to learn the raid and obtain some footage. I may release some other videos pertaining to my roster or commentary videos of certain raids. If you have enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. As always, I hope you have a wonderful time raiding in Lost Ark. Peace.